this verse, powerful verse, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. It says, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things. How many things do we have? All when are we going to get them? Now. We've already got them. Yes. He hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that's called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these. Now notice, he is saying then, the knowledge of him comes through the promises. Do you see that? He has given us all things that pertain to life, Zoe, life as he has it and experiences it. And the godly life he's assigned us to live, he's already given to us access to, to everything we'll ever need to fully accomplish everything he put us on the planet to do. Whereby are given unto us these exceeding great and precious promises. So we see he's already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge. So how's the transference come? Through the knowledge. See, there are people that are going to watch this by television that are watching it right now that they're, get, they're gaining some knowledge. The Bible says, my people, Hosea 4, 6, perish for a lack of knowledge. Now, the balance of that verse in Hosea 4, 6 says, because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you. That you'll be no priest to me, seeing you've forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Now, this is, this is showing us then that there are things that we call normal that God calls a curse, and it's all because we were born into a line of somebody that either never knew or rejected knowledge back there and wasn't, weren't functioning in what belonged to them, and it affected their seed and their seed seed. Do you see this? So there's some things that Jesus wants to set you free from that mama and them didn't know. And you're not betraying your loyalty and honor to mama and them to, to separate the difference between the truth and a lie. Because a lie is a lie. I don't care how much you love the person that told it. And a lie is not going to set you free. It doesn't matter how much of a soul tie you have to that dear one. And so you can honor a relationship without reproducing who they are, what they are, and what they do. See, one of the things we need to understand about relationships is that when we came into relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, His relationship with us changed us. Our interaction with the Spirit of God changes us. Tonight, you're being changed. While you're watching this television program, you, friend, are being changed from glory to glory. There's something God wants for you, something greater than you've ever dreamed. It's beyond what you can ask or imagine. According to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, God's at work right now working in you Beyond what you can ask or imagine, he's working in you by the power that's working in you. And Philippians 2 says that power works in you both the will and do of his good pleasure in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. So we see and understand that right here tonight there's a power at work on the inside of us. What is that power doing? That power is doing what 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says it would do. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Holy Spirit's the Spirit of freedom. I said the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of freedom. Now this is what a lot of people don't know. David said this in Psalm, Psalm 51. He said, Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from me. And then he said, uphold me with your free spirit. 
You know, it's very important to realize what the Spirit of God uses to free me. If the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, then the Spirit must use something to free me. Well, we know one of the things that he uses is the anointing. The Bible says that the anointing is that which removes burdens and destroys yokes. But defined biblically, the anointing is actually the manifestation of that spirit. See, that anointing was in Jesus all that time when he walked down the street and he said, somebody touch me. In, in, in the Gospels, the story of the woman with the issue of blood, where he's walking down the street, and all of a sudden he turns around in the press and people are thronging him on every side. He said, somebody touch me. And his disciples, astonished, said, of course somebody touched you. They're thronging you. They're touching you on every side. He said, no, you don't understand. Somebody touched you, touched me. Virtue, which is the Greek word, dunamis or dunamis, dynamite-like power, ability, the ability of heaven went out of me. Mm. Somebody touched me. And he turned around, and here this woman, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and said, if I can just but touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be whole. What was his response? Daughter, thy faith. So see, that anointing was in him that whole time. Well, why didn't it activate when the other 300, 400, 500, 200, 150 people were touching him? Because faith is what puts it to work. <laughs> faith is what puts that power to work. The Bible says this very clearly in Ephesians chapter 1 when it says in verse 19 that we need a revelation of the exceeding greatness of his power that comes toward us when we believe. It's according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So we see clearly then faith is the key to the putting to work the mighty power that will set us free. You've got to flip the switch of faith. Same thing happened in Luke chapter 5 when there in verse 17 it says it came to pass as he was teaching and all the teachers and the doctors of law and the house was filled with people and there was no room to come in, not the doors, not the windows. And it says there in, in Luke 5, 17, the power of the Lord was present to heal them, plural. What a powerful statement. Present to heal them. Present to heal them. Healing while he was teaching. The power was present to heal while he's teaching. But yet none of them got healed. That word them is plural. And we read that story. By the end of that story, a man came. They couldn't find a way to get in, so they let him down, took him on the roof, tore open the roof, let him down through the roof in the presence of Jesus. And it says when he saw their faith, think about that. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And, of course, they gasped, began to reason among themselves, who can forgive sins but God only? And Jesus perceived that that was their attitude, so he turned around and said to them, he said, what's easier? To say to him, son, your sins be forgiven you, or take up your bed and walk. Now, I love this. He said, so that you may know. Now, think about it. Think about this so that you may know. So that you may know. Now, why was it important that they know? Let's make a connection here. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, what we were talking about a moment ago. Everything that pertains to the good life God has in store for you comes to you through the knowledge of him that has called you to glory and virtue. My people perish for lack of knowledge. If you don't know what belongs to you, if you don't know it's the will of God for you to have it, you will never use your faith to get it. Faith begins where the will of God is known. So Jesus made it very clear so that you may know. 
Glory to God, that the Son of Man has power. Yes. On earth. Somebody shout out, on earth. On earth. Woo, power on earth. Amen. Power on earth. Amen. Somebody said there's power on earth. Power. That means there's power for you watching on television. There's power for you at that chair. There's power for you on that sofa. There's power in this auditorium to set you free. Power to change you forever. There's power in this studio. Glory to God. The power's here. Yes. The power is present to heal. The problem is not a lack of power. The problem is not knowing how to put the power that's available to work. See, years before electricity was discovered, it existed. 6,000 years when men were living in caves, if you could get in a time machine and go back 4,000 years and find some nomads tending flocks in the field, sleeping by fire at night or living in a cave and say, here, I brought you something. I know it's hot here in the desert. Here's a fan. How's that fan going to help them? Here's an air conditioner. How's that air conditioner going to help them? There's nowhere to plug it in. But the very power that's driving these lights was already in the earth 4,000 years ago when the shepherds were watching their flocks by night. Somebody discovered the laws that governed it. Somebody just pressed in just enough to handle it to figure out how to tap it and how to generate it and then how to contain it and then how to channel it and then how to get it somewhere on purpose. Wow. Somebody say power. power. Say it, power. power. Say it again. Power, power on earth. You see, most of the problem with the body of Christ is their faith is in the wrong thing. And their faith is in the wrong thing because it's all they've seen. A form of godliness denying the power. Our faith isn't supposed to be in the excellency of men's wisdom. Your life is not going to change just because you turned the channel and saw me teaching you some, some, some scripture out of the Bible. Any more than the people's lives changed when Jesus was walking down the street and hundreds of them were touching him and then that little woman pressed in. Now why did she press in? Well, when you go back and read it in the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 5, you see very clearly. Amen? You see very clearly there that when she had heard of Jesus, faith comes by hearing. Amen? When she had heard of Jesus, I tell you, this is one of my favorites right here. I love this. It is Matthew chapter 14, verse 34. Look at this verse. Verse 34, it said, When they had gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him. You see that key phrase right there? Now, hold your finger there and go back to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory. Did you know you're called to glory? Yes. Called to glory. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whom the Son says free is free indeed. I love Galatians 5.1. Man, it says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. 
That tells us that when we're set free, we can stay free. That we don't ever have to be in the valley and on the mountain, in the valley and on the mountain, in the valley and on the mountain. How many people have grown up in church and heard, I'm having a wilderness experience? Well, the Lord just put me through the wilderness. Problem is, you're like the Israelites. You've been there 40 years. I mean, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 1, it says it was only 11 days' journey. 11 days' journey. The end of that verse says, and it came to pass after 40 years. See, this is the problem with the body of Christ. They are taking 40 years to go 11 days' journey. They don't know how to go from amen to there it is. Because the power is available. They just don't know how to put it to work. We're never going to get access to the life that's in him that 2 Peter 1 talks about without the knowledge of him. Amen. Because if we're going to be as he is, we've got to do things like he does them. See, one of the major components of walking in dominion is not his image. Oh, that's a huge component. Because the Bible tells us in Colossians 3.10, and this is what's happening to you, and I'm, I'm thankful that the Lord brought this up in my spirit right now, because this will answer some questions for you about dominion right here. Yeah. Colossians 3.10, that if we're to put on the new man, here's how we do it. He is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So, you're going to change. And this is really, this whole subject matter of freedom now goes back to the root of what I've been teaching you all night out of 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. Because 2 Corinthians 3, 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there. Glory be to God. There is liberty. There it is. Where? Where the Spirit of the Lord is. And he says in verse 18 then, but we all with open face beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord. Now see 2 Peter 1, 3 says we're called to glory. Romans 3, 23 says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. Problem is your sin has blinded you and makes you think you are like you are when the truth is, you're living way less than who you really are. Yes, amen. Amen. Because you don't know who you really are. And if you knew who you really are, you wouldn't put up with some of the stuff you put up with. You wouldn't walk around and call defeat normal and victory the exception. You'd start living from the inside out. Oh, it'd change your life forever. In fact, tonight your life is being changed. Absolutely. Absolutely. So he's saying here, are changed. Somebody say changed. Changed Changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Now, it's very interesting because we see here that the Spirit of the Lord is speaking of a dynamic happening, a transfiguration, a transform, a metamorphosis, a change. You're being changed from one level of glory to the next level. I mean, you're coming up. The Lord did uh, speak to me today, you know, in our previous time together. I spoke of how he told us that our main assignment was to be sowers of the word. Yes. Well, of all things, God's so good. But today, Mark chapter 4, just rose in my heart today because we know that's a parable where Jesus was teaching the people. And he used the parable, uh, the analogy of a sower sowing seed. Now as believers, you know that it was the word of God was the seed that was planted on hearts. And there were several types of soil that that word meant. Four types of soil and yet only one type of soil was called good. Mm. Only one type of soil took root. 
And that word produced much increase and much fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. God used that to show me, and I want to speak to these cameras today and say to you, whoever is listening in, I know most of these people, and I know this audience here, they are good soul. They receive the word of God and they allow it to bring increase in their lives. I don't know what type soul you are out there. I don't know which of those types found in Mark chapter 4 that you would be termed. But we know that the soul is the heart of men. But I want you to know, the Lord wants you to know, that God loves you. And it doesn't matter what kind of soul you are. He created you. Glory to God. He formed you. He counted the very hairs on your head. Or not. But the Lord... <laughs> The Lord loves you. And this Jesus, he came and died for you. Glory to God. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a, a man that was good and lived, that went to heaven. He was the son of God, the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. And because he died and shed his precious blood for the remission of our sins. You can accept that. Hallelujah. And you can be saved and delivered from whatever it is that may have hold of you, that may keep you from being that good soul and not allowing you to allow the word of God to bring increase into your life. It says that the goodness of God brings men to repentance leads men to repentance. I feel like the Lord is leading you now. He wants to lead you on a path. It's that goodness. And let me say that goodness is his grace and his mercy. But above all, it's his love for you. You can't get away from that love no matter what you do, no matter what you've done. And you may say, oh, but he can't forgive me. Absolutely. There is nothing impossible with him. And he can absolutely change your heart. He can make you his child. He can give you heaven as your home. He can give you eternal life because first of all, he loves you. So I'm just going to encourage you today, this audience, they're good soul. And therefore, they're trusting and believing with us that no matter who tunes in and no matter where you've been, and no matter what you've done, and no matter what you think about yourself, they're believing with us that you will be on a collision course with the spirit of the living God, and you will come to know that love, and you'll accept this Jesus Christ that lived and died for you. The word of God is real. Don't be one that at the end doesn't hear that you weren't good. He made you to be good. He died for all of mankind. And we, no matter where you go, you cannot get away from that love. Thank you. So I just want to ask you all today to join in agreement with us that no matter who turns on that television that may come across this program, they may be good soul. But they may be one of the souls that they've not received Jesus. And they've let it go by the wayside. And the birds have eaten the seed. Or the thorns and the thistles have choked the word. Or it's, it's fallen on a rocky heart. That it springs up quickly, but because it had no depth of soil. The sun comes and it withers away. We want them to be that good soul too. Glory be to God. So Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace. But above all, thank you for that love that people, your people that you created can never get away from. We thank you for it today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Honey, just give them an opportunity right now to accept okay. Jesus as the Lord and Savior. All you have to do is say, Jesus, Jesus. I believe. 
Creative. That you are the Son of the Living God. You are the son of and the that you God. died on the cross. You died. You were crucified, crucified, dead, and buried, but you rose from I that did. tomb. But you rose. And you, your blood, paid for the remission of our sins. So simply just say, Jesus, Jesus I believe in Jesus, you. Jesus, I believe in you. I receive you. I receive you now. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you now to forgive me of my sins. Save me, Jesus. Save me now, Jesus. Deliver me, Jesus. Deliver me. I believe in you. I believe in you. And I receive you now. And I receive you now. Thank you, Jesus. It's Glory as simple as that. It's as simple Welcome as Welcome to the family of you God. saying Jesus. <laughs> Glory and to receiving God. Receiving him in your heart. Amen. And it is that Amen. simple. Amen. It's that simple. It is that simple. And Let if me you say to And them, if you prayed that, congratulations. That's exactly right. Congratulations. You're now a part of his body. You have heaven God. as a home. That is exactly Amen. right. And all they that believe on the name of the Lord That's shall it. be saved. Shall be saved. Jesus is his name. Yes. You uttered that yes, name yes. in faith Amen. and he came to dwell inside Amen. your heart. You're a new creature Amen. and you will never be the same Amen. again. We want to encourage you to get in contact with the ministry here. There'll be a website on the screen. There'll be a, 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 a way that you can contact us by mail, whatever you need to do. But we are here to help you. It is our heart to sow revelation knowledge into your life so that if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. There is nothing that's been attached to your past that cannot be broken by the authority of the word of the living God Amen. and the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Congratulations, Amen. new creature. Your future is bright in Jesus' name. Amen. We here at Harvest International Ministries want to invite you to connect with us. If you would like to receive more teaching or if you are interested in partnering with him, check us out on the web at tracyharris.tv. There, you can watch our broadcast 24-7 as well as download many of Brother Tracy's books free of charge to help you continue to build your faith and grow in your knowledge of Christ. We would also love to connect with you in person so visit the itinerary page to see when Tracy and Lori will be in your area. And as always, you are welcome to join us at our main headquarters in Texarkana. We look forward to connecting with you. So send us an email or message us on Facebook or Instagram. Send a prayer request or praise report of the miracles God is doing in your life today.